Hey there, it's Mobile Rick. Let's talk a little bit about uh, campfires. Chances are, if you're like most people, you uh, think about a campfire when you think about camping and how you're going to cook your food. You imagine your your campfire and you know all your accessories and stuff, and maybe how you're going to start your campfire, or maybe you you know have some uh, you know some of the usual trickery like lighter fluid and stuff, or maybe you're advanced and you think about tinder and kindling and all the different phases of, of getting the fire going and you're someone who likes to sit there and stoke the fire and any way you do it um, it's a little bit of work and the question I want to raise to you is, is is it actually necessary to have a campfire just to do something like to cook your food you just want to like you know a bo uh, boil a, like a kettle of tea you know make some coffee um, just heat up some water to stick in your oatmeal or something. Is it necessary to have a campfire to do all that kind of stuff? The purpose of this video is to introduce you, if you're not already acquainted, to uh, a couple of other ways that were um, started, they're kind of invented by uh, backpackers basically, and especially ultralight backpackers, um, to have ways to start uh, campfires without carrying a lot of bulky equipment or um, or having to necessarily like just you know the pure rough in it kind of way that was some some do and literally carry nothing more than maybe like a little um, stainless steel mug or or something like that maybe even something lighter than that um, so there's a couple of different ways that that I want to uh, to show you that'll make things a lot easier for you if all you really want to do is cook your food like campfires are nice right you can sit around them and you know you tell your ghost stories and stuff that but if you're like a solo camper and and it's not you don't need necessarily uh, need to have the full the, the whole party going on every single time you cook your food you just want to cook there are a couple of easier ways than like wandering around looking for all sorts of uh, you know your logs and uh, tinder and, and kindling and and all that stuff just to spend four minutes boiling a pot of water so one of these methods it's called a um, it's called a hobo stove it's a really simple little kind of thing instead of a huge campfire you're gonna make just a little tiny campfire right here and put your pot over I'm gonna show you how to do this and then there's um, another stage where I'm gonna show you something else so all we need to do in this case, instead of getting lots of big logs that are going to burn all night and then you eventually have to figure out how to put them all out, which, you know, they recommend like five gallons of water to put out your, uh, you know, your campfire so that you can be sure that it's dead out. Anywhere you camp, they want your campfire dead out. So, and I see so many people who are like breaking the rules and, and just being assholes basically by leaving their campfire smoking after they leave you don't want to do that you want to have something that's very contained and you know if this isn't a great fire ring then I don't know what is it's just your fire is contained right there and all you need to do instead of all these logs is just get yourself some uh, some twigs you don't need logs you just get some twigs and you stick them in there along with some some starter material like tinder you still kind of have to have do the, do the phases, though. If you're like a lot of campers, I mean, if you're just a car camper, you probably have a lot of these things already. You know, just things like, you know, some wads of paper or something, right? So you get some wads of paper, and in this case, I have some cardboard. And you know, you're you're gonna camp in your car. Why don't you just make it simple on yourself? And you can just have some lighter fluid, and just cheat. You don't have to be survivor man every single time you cook your food right you know unless that's your thing if that's what you want to do and that's you're you're trying to prove to yourself that you can um, go out into nature and survive then you know that's something that you do on occasion so I certainly like to practice that stuff too the survivalist stuff but not every single time I cook it's not necessary I, I camp in a vehicle I can carry stuff with me so you know and I can also I mean I mostly cook on uh, a propane stove you know, in my camper. Actually, I don't mostly do that. I do that when I'm uh, when I'm stuck, like inside. It's too cold to be outside, and that kind of thing. So, 
Here I'm just going to stick some cardboard down into here, even though it's not necessarily necessary, since I'm just going to stick some lighter fluid in here, keep it really simple. And let me uh, aim the camera down there. There we go. And let's see if I can zoom that a little bit too. Does it zoom? I don't know, for whatever reason it's not zooming. But, just light it up. And there we go. So, how are we going to cook on it? It's really, really easy. And the thing is, you can start cooking right now. You know, it took like two seconds, whereas that thing, uh, that campfire, it might have taken some time to really get the fire going so that you could begin cooking. So, we just put these little, you just take some skewers, basically, and just lay them across the top. And there you go. You got a campfire, instant fire. It's all contained, nothing complicated to put out. Okay, now, I don't know if you can see that with the camera, smoke, right? Obviously, it's a campfire, right? There's going to be smoke. But, at least it's all contained in here, and that's cool. Smoke, by the way, is a sign that you're not burning hot enough. By the time it starts burning hot enough, then it will, um, then you shouldn't see any smoke. If you have a really efficient fire, there shouldn't be any smoke, right? So, there are many reasons why this isn't a particularly um, efficient type of fire. In fact, this isn't a proper hobo stove. Um, a proper hobo stove actually has holes in the bottom to feed air in a chimney fashion up and through. So there's, but there is a reason why I'm using this, and it's a completely different purpose that I'm not going to cover in this video. But, so you do the same thing, and basically what you do is, oh, I forgot to get my bits, but... Um, you only want to use one of these. Actually, it will take just 10 seconds. Let me just turn in there and grab it. You just grab a few bits like this. It's a kit that you can get at uh, Harbor Freight. There are more expensive versions, but this was like five bucks for, for a set of three of these of different sizes. And you just take these and get uh, a power, uh, a drill and just drill yourself some holes in there around the top and also do it around the bottom and you have yourself a hobo stove. Another way you could do it is at uh, you could get yourself one of these um, utensil holders for a dishwasher uh, made of stainless steel. You could get it at Walmart and I think the price was less than five dollars. It's a crazy good deal and it'll basically function as a hobo stove. It has way more holes than this so it's not going to be as efficient. Um, it's not going to create a single draft upwards from the bottom to the top. It's going to be more like, um, uh, yeah, just leaking heat all over the place. But you're still going to have a very contained fire that is going to heat up your your dinner, right? So, now did that just go out? I think it just went out for some reason. Oh, well, I haven't been really feeding it, so, you know, just keep on feeding it like this. Yeah, there it goes. Back. Okay, so again, it's really smoky. And you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, it's a fire, of course it smokes. Well, the fact of the matter is it doesn't have to smoke. What if I told you that you can have a perfectly good campfire in this size that's not smoking. In fact, it's completely smoke-free almost completely smoke free and burns almost exactly like propane because it's essentially just gas. Well, I'm going to show you that right now. Let's get this over. I'll put this to, oh, let's put that there for now. And here's a different type of stove. Looks pretty much the same, right? And I got ring holes around the bottom, no holes at the top. But what's going on here? Let me just, uh, it's kind of running out of fuel there. And it's actually getting so smoky that it's annoying me. So I'm going to pull it out of the way. I should not have picked it up with my hands, but I'm a little distracted making a video. But anyway, what we have here is a stove that's called a gasifier. And 
Hold on a second. Let me put this other fire out because it's really annoying me. I'm just going to throw some dirt in it. All right, so this is a stove that's called a gasifier. And what, what this does is it separates the processes of combustion. Um, there are two things that go on when something burns. You think of this as like you set it on fire and then the wood burns. Technically, the wood doesn't burn. Or it's actually the burning process is two different things. One is called pyrolysis, and the other one is combustion. Pyrolysis is, means that when you heat it up, then the wood will begin to release uh, gases, basically um, just the, the, the carbonaceous chemicals that are inside the wood will begin to release gas. And then the gas, when it mixes with oxygen at a high enough temperature, then it will combust. So there's two different things going on whenever you burn anything. This separates that process. So what you have is an internal burn chamber in here where you put your wood and then as it heats up, it will release the gases up here. And then what these holes are for is that there's there's actually it's a double chambered kind of thing. Let's see, this is there's two chambers where that allow it to go up inside there. So it comes in the side holes and it travels up, as well as going giving a little bit of air for the combustion inside the combustion chamber. But then the secondary air goes up these channels and then come out inside here can we see that there are holes inside so they come in from the outside comes up in the inside and this is secondary air that once the gases rise the hot gases rise and then they combust only at the top and only combusting the gases just so it's really this is heating up the wood so that it releases gases and in that respect it becomes like a propane stove it's um it's just it's wood gas instead of propane right so we do the same thing. We fill it up with uh, with wood, same way. And you can use all sorts of other things. One of the things I usually use is uh, pellets that work really well. Just for the sake of demonstration, I'll just uh, just fill it part way up. And then I'll throw just a little bit of lighter fluid on there. And I normally use a longer one, but all of mine's are not working right now. That's okay. Okay. And then, uh, let's see. One of the other things to mention about this is that you notice I lighted it from the top rather than doing something where, like, going over to the bottom and lighting it from the bottom. This is a... Uh, you could almost say it's a new type of a, of a stove, just in the history of stoves. This is one of the, the newer designs, which are designed to burn off the top rather than burn off the bottom. And like I said, it's because it heats the wood up, releases the gases, so only the top of the, the system is burning. Rocket stoves are also a type of stove that burns only from the top. And this one is called a top lit updraft type of stove. Um, because it's depending on the draft going up. So we have a little fire going on there, and I think if I were even if I were to zoom it in, you shouldn't see any smoke whatsoever. And yeah, I'm just looking at it. It's always fun to look at the fire. So now I'm going to wait and see if it actually starts to uh, combust. Well, if we let this go on long enough, and I'm not going to do it in this video. Um, I'll have other videos that are in my uh, member section. In fact, let me hit this a little bit more. Um, so right now, we don't have any secondary combustion going on yet. But right now, we kind of are burning the wood. It's just sort of all happening at once down in the combustion chamber. If we had a more uniform uh, source like pellets then we would really see the um, the gasifying effect that that's pretty much how i cook all the time and you immediately see that all of these things on the top on the inside they'll start shooting out from inside there 
it's just total evidence that you're dealing with a um, a secondary burn and you can kind of see it now I don't know if my camera is going to be able to, to show you but you can kind of see eh, not quite yet but you'll see you'll see a pattern a definite flame pattern of the air is coming in from the sides so how do we uh, do this well one way to do it it's not the way I usually do it but I'm doing it just for the demonstration because it's similar enough to other products um, or these types of stoves is that here's a, a pot stand which is just basically like um, another type of can cut to size so that I could fit it in a ring around here normally I would put that on there before I stick my fingers in it or I mean before I, I light it and then just sit it on top like that and now we got a stove that has no smoke at all and again is totally contained in this little spot and so there we go and like I said I got a couple other um, ways that I show in my uh, um, member videos uh, which I'll post a link to uh, maybe even in the video if, if I can figure out how to do it and of um, that will include how I, I make this system. It's really easy, actually. I mean, it's what it is, it's a paint can, and you can look this up on Google. There are plenty of people explaining how to do it. Um, lots of YouTube videos, etc. That, uh, okay, I'm seeing a little smoke. Why am I seeing smoke? Smoke indicates that it's cooling down. So something about the, um, the fire is cooling down, and it's making, it's preventing full combustion. So I think it might just be burning off stuff inside. Oh, I think it's just stuff that's on, on the pot. So I'm not real concerned about that. The smoke is just, there's very little smoke. But when you see it, it means something is inefficient about it. And honestly, whenever you just use twigs, when I use pellets, it's extremely efficient. But just using the twigs, it's uh, everything's very uneven. So... There's lots of air in the combustion chamber, and things are all different sizes. There might be different degrees of moisture. Moisture is usually a good reason for creating a lot of smoke. But anyway, this is um, a, a paint can, a quart-sized paint can, and um, a Progresso can. So you can look up Progresso and paint can stove in YouTube, and you'll find a lot of people explaining how to do it. Basically, it's just a paint can, and all you need to do is, besides putting holes in here in the bottom of this, or some other um, means there's... I have my own special way of doing it and, um, and then as before you make your holes at the top and and then you just shove it up in there and it, it, it just something about the way that this fits right into the, the quart paint can it will just jam its stuff self in there really really tight in fact I tried to take it apart just right a bit ago just for demonstration and I couldn't do it it was it, it's locked in there so tight and I've been using this for like four years now is that right uh, for th at least three years so it works really really well so besides um the member videos uh, if you're interested in, in learning more and and uh, or if you're a total do-it-yourselfer you're able to just go on uh, to YouTube and figure out how to make the progresso and paint can um, stove uh, you can go ahead and do that on your own uh, one thing I also will mention is that there are companies who are making um, commercial versions and one of the cool things is but you see how it's just kind of like it's sort of rusted out it's all dirty and stuff uh, I mean I would love to have like a stainless steel version of this though I'm personally you know such a, a do-it-yourself or this is fine for me but like if I was giving somebody a gift then I don't think I would really want to give them this and this they were uh, unless they were like just like me but um, a company called solo stove they make one that's basically the same design. This is sort of a, these designs are a knockoff of a, of a concept of a stove called, um, the original one was Bush Buddy. And this is sort of um, an adaptation of the original Bush Buddy idea. Solo Stove did their own uh, adaptation of that. And one of the cool things is that they made it all out of one solid piece of, of stainless steel. So it's really nice and it's not gonna get all grimy, dirty, rusty like this one is. I'm gonna to have to replace this really soon um, even though it served me really really well. So uh, 
yeah, I, I totally recommend if you want to give somebody a gift, uh, check out Solo Stove and see about um, their really nice stoves that allow you to do exactly what we just did right here. And as well as they have a lot of other um, different, like different pots and stuff um, that work really well with this same system that, you know, they're all made to go together, fit into a common um, pouch so that you can have like a little self-contained system, which this kind of is. And I'll explain how I do that in my, my own member videos. Um, but they have their own system, and which especially makes it good as a gift or, you know, for yourself too. I personally would love to have one as a gift, and I would probably use it instead of this. And though I would use this as sort of my experimentation with, um, you know, combustion and stuff like that, working on just uh, some cool schemes. So some different options for you if you want to learn more about uh, making your own stoves or buying some stoves or um, getting gifts for people and, and stuff like that. So I hope you found this this helpful and informative and hope I've given you some more options uh, other than this campfire which has gone out because I haven't been tending to it as happens unlike these little stoves here. Alright, 